aim to motivate and inspire viewers to enjoy the clothes they wear as an expression of their personality and their beliefs. This is the Slow Wardrobe. Come and have a look. Hello, welcome to episode 85 of the Slow Wardrobe podcast. My name is Linda and I'm your host. In this episode, I will give you an update on my knitting and crochet. I'm going a little bit nuts with that. More about that in a minute. Followed by the craziest story about a parcel that took more than three years to reach me. You can't make these things up, but they happen in real life. And then in the layer cake section, I introduce our new pre-order and I show a restock of the layer cake cocoons, specifically the organic cotton jersey baggies and the anytime top, the long sleeve tops in some new or additional pieces to the existing colors. How cryptic can I get? Sorry about that. Okay. Let's get in, let's get dive in and get started with <laughs> the knitting section. So I hope I can find my words a little bit better going forward. I have um, a finished object to show you and an, a new section or a new uh, chapter to the uh, crocheted phone pouch. And then I have a whole bunch of works in progress. So let's start with the, the finished object. A um, little bit of a preface with this pair of socks, as you can see, um, I uh, recently finally uh, got my act together just in the run up to Christmas because there was more time for it and put shelving in what is to be my own little craft room, my own little hobby room at home where all my wool stash, yarn stash is together in one place in the house for the first time ever. And uh, just in the last two weeks, I've moved all my stash from under bed boxes, baskets and various places in the house, some stuff here at the studio and it's all in boxes that are uh, transparent but closed in my shelving in my new little room. So um, if I can get my act together at some point, I'll show you a, a photograph of the room or just a photograph of the stash wall. It's embarrassingly large still, despite putting lots of it on the website. There's still lots of D-stash going there. If you're interested, have a look. The D-stash is still live and it is um, separated out by yarn type. I've got lace weight, lots of four ply, but also some um, sport weight and DK yarns uh, up for grabs. A lot of them are discontinued or discontinued colors. So there may be something that you like. Do have a look. Still, of course, this meant that moving uh, my stash from one box into another and sorting them all by weight, etc that I have held a lot of my <laughs> stash again, actually held the yarns and said, oh my gosh, yes, I've got this. Oh my gosh, I've got that. Oh yes, I had this stashed away. And one of the stashed away balls of yarn was what has now turned into this glorious pair of home socks. The uh, ball band, because I think this is a discontinued yarn. I'm actually chasing it around Europe at the moment to see if I can find any left in any little yarn shops because I love it for thick yarns that I just wear at home. I'm a relatively loose knitter, so I think normally this is um, the, the recommended needle size is four to five millimeter or yeah, four to five millimeters. I knit this on three and a quarter and that works a treat for me. Um, it is a Regia yarn, uh, Mai by, by Shakamaya, Regi, Regia Stockholm color. And that's what they call an eight ply. So it literally is twice the thickness of a four ply. So 
I could make this out of two strands of four ply held together, for example. But I mean, these colors, that is what I absolutely fell in love with. This particular color combination with the beautiful kind of soft uh, mustard colors, the pink, the, the really dark ink blue, the, the, it's got kind of sage green in it. I adore this particular colorway. And so um, I knitted this pair of socks for myself just to wear at home. I prefer that over wearing slippers. If I don't need to go outside, then I just wear a pair of thick socks. So these are finished for me. And I had another ball of the same brand in a different colorway that I have started knitting now. Um, one of my boys was at home and uh, both Peter, my husband, and uh, Jazz, one of the boys, um, were around when I said, guys, I've got a different color. What do you think of these socks? Oh, yeah, they're really nice. Would either of you like a pair of socks in this color? And they went, both went, yes, please. <laughs> well, I've got one ball of yarn and two uh, very keen customers. So one of them is going to get this glorious colorway of socks. I've made the, um, the leg part a little bit longer. I'm doing a broken rib of um, a one one rib, uh, three rounds in uh, knit one, purl one, and then three rounds in purl one, knit one. So that creates this lovely textured sock with the idea of, you know, wearing it at home, just slobbing around. It's very hard wearing sock yarn and then knitting it on three and a quarter millimeter needles. You get a nice firm fabric for um, socks that will really last well. So one of them will get this and then for the other one, I will do a pair of socks in two of uh, a regular four plies held together. Or if I can get any more of this brand, then I will. If you've got any of this in this color or that or any of the other colors and you wanna get rid of it, please give me a shout. I'd be very happy to pay full price for it. And I'll call, tell you again what it's called. It's a Schackenmeyer Regia Stockholm color. The original uh, retail price for it was £12.95. That's 150 grams. They're big bulls because, um, of course, uh, they are thick yarn. So 150 grams does a large pair of socks with a, regular, a reg relatively long uh, leg on it and that's what we need for the boys they've got size 11 feet all three of them do so this should just about do a pair of socks so if you want to get rid of um, a ball of this please give me a shout uh, I can pay you for it um, we can do a swap if you want to have any of uh, my other yarns or a swap for one of my D stashes then I'd love to do that I'm going to talk a little bit more about this glorious new project bag in a minute, but I'm going to stick to the knitting first and I will return to this. So the um, <laughs> knitting craze ensues because, of course, I had projects on the go already um, that I have or have not worked on particularly much. I will go through them one by one. Of course, here is the biggest one, which is my uh, the jumper, the one that is knitted with the art yarns. Remember it? The art yarns, um, cashmere, and then um, what, half and half kind of stripes, really. You can't really see the stripes because of the stitch that I'm using, but stripes with um, my Yak Blend 2 held together with one strand of Art Yarns uh, mohair. And this is a ball that I've got pre-wound with one strand of mohair and a strand of the Yak Blend 2 in Bitter Lime, which is how I use it. The reason that I haven't done anything with this jumper anymore was that I thought I was under the impression that I had used up one complete um, hank of the mohair and the mohair is the yarn that is consists of two strands it's a two ply just like the um, 
uh, cashmere is and those two strands can be separated from each other which of course is a bit of a pig of a job when you're talking about mohair so they have to be completely separated in order for me to use one strand at a time held together with my yak blend too i thought i had used up all my mohair from the first um, hank so i was under the impression that i had to separate the second hank and that i wasn't looking forward to that so i was kind of pushing that job ahead took the whole thing to holland with me because i recently visited my mum, which was a wonderful week i'm definitely going to do that again so visited my mum, brought the yarn because I thought as we sit around crafting, I can separate the two strands and chat with her and whatever. As it happened, we did precious little crafting that week because we were so busy doing other stuff. All stuff that was really useful for her to be doing together. So I'm really pleased that we have a chance, but I now still have to go back to do a week worth of crafting with her and just spending afternoons snuggled up inside and doing needlework doing knitting that that's what i went for and we didn't really get around to doing much of it at all we managed one afternoon of uh, jigsaw puzzles when uh, my daughter joined us for the weekend still i'm not complaining i had a wonderful week so when i got back from holland and i was rearranging all my stash and moving it from mostly under the bed into my new craft room i found that I did have another ball of the single, the, the, the separated mohair, which I have now wound together with the um, Yak Blend 2. So now I can finish at least, at least finish sleeve number two and hopefully make a start with the, um, the bottom part of the jumper. So more about that soon, but that explains at least in part why I haven't made any progress. Now, so since I have this ball wound, why am I not knitting on it? Because of course the whole stash move has got made me gone crazy with other things that I dis discover and want to do. It's like, oh, let me have a quick go with this and let me have a, that's how the socks came into being. And that's also how the next project has come into being. Let me find it. Yeah, it's not even a proper project yet. This was a present from one of my Christmas presents. Another glorious Ockhills bag from uh, Midwinter Yarns. And look, red with on the inside, little gnomes. Ooh. Can you see it? There. What a little gnomes! Oh my gosh! These little gnomes are a proper firm favourite in my household around Christmas time. I've always got some living on shelves and whatever when it's Christmas time, and I've got some dotted around the house. So when I alerted the kids to the existence of this bag, they immediately jumped on it and bought me one for Christmas. So thrilled with that. This is my third, is it the third waxed one or the second? I must have four or five of these already by now. I absolutely adore these bags. As you can see, they stand up. You, they're big enough for a jumper project. And if you've got something small, you can just wind them down and close them and they won't take as much space. Now, to my project. This is deep, deep, deep stash. I think we're talking 10 years old, maybe. Um, I did a course it was a spinning course i think together with my dear friend helen about whom i will speak more in a minute uh at wingham wool and uh i must have been about 10 years ago so we were there for uh i think it was a two-day course and of course we were trawling the shelves and the uh different uh, places in the barn where wing and wool sell their wares and I from the back of a shelf pulled this bag that had six balls of this yarn in it and oh my gosh I love it as much as when I first saw it it it's a hundred percent wool and it's got these colored neps in it 
and it's one of those wools that has a binder around it and it almost looks like it's what they just swept up from the floor in the spinning mill and then spun it. It's got this kind of flecked oatmeal color. It's got a bit of gray in it and a bit of cream. And this bag had six balls of this stuff in it, £2.50 per ball. <laughs> it's absolutely nothing. And I thought, oh my gosh, I would love to, to knit something with it. And because it's six balls, I have no idea whether it's going to be enough for a garment. Most probably not, because I like big things. Although, I'm thinking maybe like a, a fitted cardigan or something like that. Something along the lines of the size of the coloured cardigan, the Astrid, that I did. The, the I'll show you a picture of it here that I knitted last year. That particular kind of boxy shape, not too small, not too big, really works. So if I could get that out of those six balls maybe with some stripes for example i could pick one of the colors from here maybe like that that beautiful mustard color or there's a dark green in there there's a dark blue and stripe it with with this flecked beautiful donegal flecked yarn so um, all i've done so far is knitted a little section on four millimeter needles that was definitely too tight. I then went to five millimeter needles because I think it's more of an Aran weight, which is working better. So um, it's got no ball bands. It just says that it's 100% wool, but I have no idea of the yardage. I've got a little tool to work out what the yardage is. So I will double check that because that will really help me work out whether I've got enough for um, a garment without supplementing the yarn. Although, like I said, I wouldn't mind supplementing and work with some stripes or what have you. So all I've done here is work out a gauge that I really like in this yarn. And now I have to work out um, yarn quantities, etc. before I can actually decide what to make with it. You've got any ideas for me? A good pattern uh, to make with this kind of yarn would be wonderful. Of course, uh, I don't have a measuring tape here. So I can't give you the, actually, I'll put that in the down bar when I'm editing. I will double check what the gauge is that I ended up with. And if you know of a pattern that you think I like on the basis of that gauge, then give me a shout. So I have no idea when I'm going to knit this, but I, after all these years seeing this again, I thought oh, I have to do something with it. So that's this work in progress, but there are more. Look, so in this case, you can roll it up twice and then close it. And then you've got this cutest little bag. So there's more though. Um, this one, again, <laughs> deep, deep stash. And then playing with it, thinking, oh, maybe this will go with this. I don't know yet whether this will go with this. I'll show you what I'm doing and why before deciding whether, what I'm going to do with it. I had one little multicolored ball that I absolutely adore in terms of colors. It is, it was a, a, a one of kind little 50 gram hank of lace and it is a I think it's a superwash. Yeah, no, it's a hundred percent organic merino. It is 673 meters in the 50 grams. And it came from Boo's Attic. That is a, a yarn dyer who's not dying anymore, unfortunately, um, but I loved her aesthetic. I loved her uh, yarn color choices. And I told her more than one occasion that I was so jealous, so envious of the tagline that came with her on, uh, with her label. Because what she's got, it's, it's Boo's Attic, which, and it's a lovely logo. And then it says something old, something new, something borrowed, something Boo. Oh my gosh, I love that kind of play of words. Wonderful, wonderful tagline. Purveyor of luxury hand-painted hand yarns and spinning fibres. Simply Serene Singleton. 
is only one of me and the color way is called Monet's Garden. I love it but I've never done anything with it. It's only 50 grams so I thought well maybe I can combine it with something else and one of the other things that I found again deep stash this is a habu yarn it has it only information in Japanese on it which of course I don't speak but it's um it almost looks like a strand of crocheted yarn rather than just spun and it's got these tiny tiny what almost look like translucent wings emitting from it in this really pale brown color so i thought oh actually these two go together quite nicely in terms of color combination i did a little bit of knitting with both held together didn't like that and then to see whether they can go together in a project, I started knitting my uh, double knitted um, uh, Dumbord effect. I've got one here. Remember my little Dumbord scarf? You end up working with two different colors or sometimes two different textures of yarn and the whole thing is double up. The uh, pearl side is on the outside and you work both sides at the same time. It's a form of double knitting, not double knitting, but double knitting. So what I've got here are little squares of the uh, little flighty yarn and little squares of the multicolor from Boo and I don't know yet how much I like it. I'm going to keep going a little bit further. My initial reaction was like, oh, I don't think so. But I think it needs more of a chance to shine. I also don't know whether I want the stitches because, again, these are three and a quarter millimeter needles. So they're giving me quite a loose fabric, quite loose stitches, which I think is ideal for this yarn. But not sure about this yarn. I don't know whether these stitches want to be smaller to really make the yarn sing. The jury is out. I don't know yet. I will keep you posted. I will keep playing with it. I love the playing with it part. And uh, I'm waiting for it to tell me what it wants to be effectively. Of course, with 670 meters, there's enough to make just a, sh a short little scarf. I've seen the whole um, Instagram craze with all the little um, the really short uh, scarves that just go around your neck twice and maybe do something like that, but in a finer yarn. I don't know yet. I will get back to you and let you know what I've decided once I do or show you more of my trials if I'm not sure yet. Got this in another gorgeous little project bag um, that is one of the embroidered uh, ones that, of course, you've seen from me before. Uh, Trava and Wool, uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, embroidered project bags on recycled and hand painted fabrics. I love her bags. She's done bags for me as well. I think we've got, I've got one left in stock that a beautiful orangey flowers embroidered on herringbone on the, the steel herringbone. That's the last bag that I've got. I must get back in touch with her to beg for some more bags, maybe send her some more attractive looking linens to try and tempt her, but we'll see how we go. So that's for that one. And then last but not least, project knitting a phone pouch. I got an email from one of my dear customers who said, oh, Linda, I love the phone pouch, but I, I cannot crochet for the life of me is would could could somebody crochet this for me i am an avid knitter but not crochet it's like no i don't know who could crochet one of these for you if one of you want to let me know but i did think okay knitter why not come out with a knitted version of this crocheted pouch now because it is lined of course the fabric will give it some sturdiness and will keep its shape because 
normally when you knit then you end up with a fabric that is more stretchy than when you crochet even when it's in linen linen doesn't stretch quite as much but this knitted fabric of course does stretch so i thought great here's my opportunity and here's my challenge i'm going to come up with a knitted stitch a knitted fabric that is a lot less stretchy than normal knitted fabric and i've cracked it i'm really pleased with what i've got and i'm going to have to see whether i can show you a close-up of what i've got so far it's not much <laughs> slow progress and it's partially because i only do this during the day when i've got enough light i really could do with a better craft light to work with at in the evening at home so this is more mostly a, a daytime job at the moment but it's a it's an almost brick like texture that i've ended up with because i end up with a combination of twisted stitches and slipped stitches a twisted stitch makes a, t a twisted knit stitch will make your fabric less stretchy and is in in horizontally and a slipped stitch will reduce the stretchiness in the vertical direction so the two of them together has given me a fabric that stretches very very little and it's also given me a lovely lovely texture again if i can do a close-up i will show it here um of course you know don't be fooled by the size of the stitches that you see because they're going to look bigger than they are in real life this is done on a two millimeter needle corresponding with the two millimeter hook that you work on when you uh, crochet one of these so this is slow going but i think it's worth it so i'm going to stick with it and then uh add the knitted version to the pattern so it will no longer just be a crocheted phone pouch it could be crocheted or knitted watch this space eventually <laughs> you'll see this coming through as a pattern i may be some time because it is slow progress like i said and i would like to have a photograph of a finished one on the pattern so that was my last work in progress Right, what shall I tell you about first? Let's first go back to this glorious knitting bag that I was just given by my friend Helen earlier this week. And the reason she gave it to me was because I had a big birthday earlier this week. Enough said. I've gotten to the age now that the number and who I believe I am and how I feel don't relate to each other at all anymore uh so you know we'll forget about the number and i'll just be me at whatever age but i think because the large uh, because of the <laughs> the large round number um helen wanted to give me a special present and boy did she push out the boat you may be familiar with um yarns from the border mill who have a box of tweed uh, colors, 50 colors, and it's like a sample box, 50 colors, 10 grams per color. And I had given a box like that to Helen a couple of years ago as a present. And she decided, and she decided then at the time to uh, weave a lap blanket with the box that I had given her where she used all the colors. And it was absolutely stunning. And what has she done? She's done the same thing again. So she bought a box of the sample, little sample balls, the, the sample box of 50 colors and knitted this lap blanket with it. Can you believe it? I mean, what a present, what a present. Oh my goodness, it is so stunning. That's it sh showing on my uh, sofa at home. It's the opposite side of the corner where I normally snuggle. So it's, a, it's a corner sofa and I sit in the corner with my legs up and then can pull the blanket right over my legs, which is just perfect. And she had some tiny pieces left over and she had some warp left over. And what she made with the leftovers, can you believe it, is this glorious project bag. So I got the blanket 
the project bag and to wrap the whole box with the content up a back strap a little woven back strap that she made for me as well with leftovers i mean just gorgeous she does back strap weaving I'll uh, give you details of where you can see more of her work and see what else she does down here. But just in a public forum, thank you so much, Helen. I am humbled and so honored with this present. It's a proper heirloom and I will cherish it for the rest of my life. So that was my birthday, my very, very special present. Now on to something else that happened that was rather special and bizarre i had i was working with a lady who was doing test knits for me leona and in 2019 she knitted for me this glorious shawl it's the starflake by stephen west i mean look at this i think it might have been was it the mystery knit along that year? May have been. Anyway, Starflake. Gorgeous knit. Really fun knit as well by the looks of it. That looks like it could have been one of his mystery knits because it's kind of modular in the way that it's built up and that's what they normally are like. But anyway, this shawl. She knitted this shawl for me and she used uh, two of my soliloquy yarns uh, this is this color is called Bone and this color is called Orion, both dyed by Sharon from Five Moons. And this is in the Alpaca Boo base. Alpaca Boo is pretty much the only base I've got left now. Uh, the Merino sil silk is, is almost all gone. So um, she knitted this. This uh, sample takes close to 100 grams of each color. So two hanks of 100 grams will knit you a glorious star flake. And I think I still have both of these colors in stock. Anyway, why am I showing this now, nearly four years later or three and a half years later? Well, what happened is that Leona finished the sample, mailed it to me with a note saying, Linda, my uh, email has just changed. My email just, this is my new email address. I'm also about to move house and I will let you know when I've moved and mailed it to me. That parcel did not reach me. I kept sending her emails regularly and tried to reach out to her saying, Leona, are you okay? What happened to the, the shawl? Because, you know, she just went quiet all of a sudden. And I feared the worst because I never got any responses. So eventually I had no other way of connecting with her. It was just her email address and her home address. So I thought, well, maybe she just decided that she didn't want to do this anymore. Maybe she's been sick. I had no idea. So then, of course, the pandemic struck because this was 2019 and the pandemic struck early 2020. And that kind of wiped us all out the whole idea of connecting with leona was kind of blown out of the water by that and on we went in terms of timing fast forward to may 2022 where out of the blue i get an email from a lady called talula and talula tells me um i have a parcel that is addressed to the slow wardrobe with a return address that is my address, but I've never ordered anything for you, from you. And yeah, I've lived here for years, so I have no idea how my address can be connected with you. This was out of the blue. It's got some knitting in it. The knitting is cream and gray, she called it. None of it meant anything to me. Would you like me to send you the parcel? I said, yes, of course. I would love to see what that is because I had no idea. She didn't tell me which part of the country she lived in. So I did not make the connection with Leona. Anyway, it's like, yes, please send me the parcel. Let me know if you want any compensation. I heard nothing. I completely forgot about it. This was May last year. 
Fast forward to until um, about two weeks ago, early January, I got another email from Tallulah again saying, Linda, I am so sorry. I think I promised that I was going to send you this little box. I put it on um, uh, uh, a box in, in my house. I think it fell behind and I never found it back until I was doing a big spring clean and I moved things around and all of a sudden I found this box again. I'm so sorry, would you still like it? Like, yes, okay, send it to me, yes, please. So the parcel arrived and in it is the Starflake by Leona with her new email address. So I was finally, two and a half years after she moved, able to reach out to her at her new email address saying, Leona, why didn't you contact me? And she was like, well, I assumed that you were busy and that, you know, you know how things go and then the pandemic and whatever. So, you know, I thought everything was fine. Like, <laughs> of course, she never got paid for this work, for other test nets that she did for me. And she said, oh, that's fine. That's why I was like, no, that's not fine. I will pay you for the work that you did. Anyway, I'm so pleased that I have reestablished contact with Leona. I hope she watches this podcast. I don't actually know. I'll tell her that I've mentioned it here. And look at this glorious Starflake reunited after two and a half, nearly three years of going around the houses and never getting to me in the first place. This, of course, I would have promoted in the autumn of 2019 and the start of 2020 when I did the last unravel in February, right before we went into lockdown. You cannot make these things up, can you? So I'm so glad that I've got it now. I'm really thrilled to show it to you because it is another great example of um, Stephen West design that is reduced to more wearable proportions by using a slightly finer yarn. As you might know, Soliloquy is 600 meters per 100 gram rather than 400 meters per 100 grams, which are most of the four ply yarns that Stephen specifies for his big shawls. And by going a little bit down in terms of uh, fineness of the yarn and a finer needle, you end up with still, as you can see, this goes all the way down to your thighs when you put it around your shoulders once. So it's still a plenty big shawl, but not quite as overwhelming. So if you want any advice or any suggestions in terms of needle size and yarn quantities for any of Stephen's shawls, knit in soliloquy rather than a four ply, again, reach out and give me a shout. I'm very happy to help. Uh, I have some other shawls of his already on the website with suggestions for kits, etc., that show you how they come down in size when you knit them in soliloquy. That's about it, I think, in on the knitting and crochet section. Well, crochet just as an example, because I'm now knitting the phone pouch. Let's move on and dive into layer cake. Enjoy. So yeah, we've got some restock and one new edition. Actually, we've got two new editions. As you may recall, with this color gray, I only introduced tops and no bottoms. And with the darker color, the uh, slate gray, I introduced bottoms without the anytime top. What I'm wearing at the moment, because I've been able to rectify that now, is the large long baggies in the new grey and an anytime top to go with it. And the anytime top I've got on is a size three. So it's the long sleeve version, the anytime top, the slightly longer one, as you can see, covering bottom, covering tummy nicely long sleeves and this in the size three um, worn oversized. So I can wear uh, anything from a size zero to a size three in the uh, tops. 
and if I wear a size zero it's really fitted especially now because I think I've managed to put on more weight again over Christmas far too indulgent we'll do something about that again but I can still squeeze into a size zero if I want a really fitted look underneath some of my other layer cakes most of the times I wear a size one slightly loose with the dolman sleeves but you can go up in size if you want to wear it looser and uh, with baggies now to match so we now have all four of those baggy colors with a matching anytime top the gray the slate the navy and the black and i will in the course of this video show all of them either worn together like this and in various sizes but also worn with other uh, garments let me first take you through the four colors though next up the black black matching anytime top and baggies baggies again in the long large still my favorite size and length but this time the anytime top in a size two so i'm gradually going down in size next color the slate in the um size uh, one top again with the same size baggies but again down one size in the top here it comes yes down one size one in the anytime top on me and my bust is i think about 242 and a half inch at the moment so that's a size one on a 242 and a half inch bust and last but not least the navy and here it is in the navy with a size zero a size zero you can see that it's really tight on me but it's still extremely comfortable to wear because this is where you can really see the magic of the dolman sleeve come into its own this gives you complete freedom of movement when you wear it tight and you don't end up depending on what you wear over the top of it with shoulder seams at different places so despite the tight fit and the negative ease because the idea is to wear it as it, with a tight fit as an underpinning so underneath under gar uh, other garments woolly jumpers for example that you don't find pleasant to wear on your skin a tight anytime top underneath is perfect especially with the higher neckline so those are the four colors let me start covering them up to give you some views of what it looks like when you actually do wear these as underpinnings so here is one of the new love tunics but in a size two so i'm wearing this slightly oversized as you can see especially with those dolman sleeves despite of my bust having grown i can still easily wear a size one in the um love tunic and that is because of that dolman sleeve and that extra roominess around the bust which is put there on purpose because this is not a garment to wear tight and fitted this is a tunic type garment that you throw on over the top of other garments unless you are of the persuasion that you do like to wear it underneath other things so with something like this and that dolman sleeve you can still do that as well so i will show you in a minute I've shown you in the past but i'll do it again a, a tunic a love tunic like this worn either over the top or underneath a sleeveless layer cake it works but the point was the idea back to the idea of wearing the uh, cocoon at home just having a snuggly top and these uh, trousers on and then when you need to go out all you have to add really is a tunic like this or one of the dresses for example and you can go out without having to get completely changed it was an idea that was born during lockdowns of course when we were all cooped up inside and were not necessarily wearing stuff for outside the idea with the cocoons is that they can do both 
They're great for snuggling at home and great for going out in, whether they're underpinnings or just part of the um, entire uh, outfit that you're putting on. So let me stick with um, the um, love tunic just for a sec, show you one size smaller with a, a different set of the cocoons underneath. So back to the size two anytime top in the black with, in this case, with a size one love tunic over the top. As you can see, I've got room to move. It's comfortable to wear. And one of the reasons that I'm showing those same colors together is that I'm lucky, to, happy to report that the uh, black of the cocoons and the black of our linen are a very good match. Sometimes you get blacks that are slightly more gray or slightly more blue or even greenish. These are both very, very similar. So they are great to wear together. And tone on tone with the different fabrics, you get, of course, the different kind of um, feel to them and the different flow of them and that slight difference in texture, even though the colors are the same, which is one of the things that I really like. So I'll keep going with um, more garments to wear because the idea with layer cakes is always that you build up different layers so that with a small number of garments, you have lots of different outfits. So if I'm wearing this set at home, the cocoon set at home, and it's still too cold, it's now it's like two or three degrees Celsius outside, too cold to just throw this over and put a coat on. I would like some more cover. I could grab another pair of baggies to put over the top or even a play suit. Let me show you. So black gingham play suit. This is a size too long. I'm a bit restricted in the different play suits that I can show you because we did a sale not too long ago of play suits. So uh, the different lengths and sizes that I have available to just grab to show you is slightly depleted, but here we are. Size two, so I've got a size two play suit with a size one love tunic. The size two play suit is slightly oversized on me. However, as you can see with the linen, it just kind of flows. It doesn't have to be fitted. The idea with layer cake is that you wear them with positive ease and you wear them loose rather than fitted and tight. So just literally thrown this over the top, but of course I can go the other way around, can't I? I'll show you. So with other way around, of course, I meant first the play suit over the top of my cocoon. So here are still, as I said, the cocoon baggies and the size two anytime top. And then I can add this back over the top of the play suit for a different look. If I want to see less of the play suit and show it more as if it were a pair of baggies, then I can go play suit first, tunic second and this tunic is a smaller size than the play suit. Doesn't matter. It all flows over the top of each other. It doesn't end up looking tight. It doesn't end up sitting stuffed. You can still move freely with them. And of course I can zip this up. I could even choose to wear the play suit open as a dress. If you have a play suit that you normally wear cropped in the summer, for example, then you can just throw it over the top and wear it as a dress over your uh, cocoon baggies for going out. Looks fine too. But here the outfit is with the love tunic over the top instead of underneath. So that over the top and underneath, keep playing with that because you can go much further with that than you might realize. And when I mean further, I really mean wearing a long sleeve dress, one of the love dresses, for example, underneath a play suit. I will show you that later on. But for now, I'm going to keep going with uh, different outfits because I've only shown you the love tunic over the top of the cocoons. But what about one of your smocks, for example? Let me show you. 
size one smock over a size two anytime top works a treat works fine and this of course is in the bright new check the large check now we've done the large check in the smocks in the baggies in the play suits and in the tulip dresses but one of them one of our favorite garments has been missing so it's its turn this time to go on pre-order the love dress in the large bright check here it comes Ta-da! Isn't it glorious? This is a size one as well. And I'm specifically showing you that following on from the smock. You could see that I could still just about get away with the size one smock. Although with the 42 and a half inch chest that is starting to be tight on me, it does still fit, but I can't wear really bulky things underneath anymore because it is now quite fitted on me. So with the dolman sleeve and that slightly more generous cut that the dolman sleeve automatically introduces it means that in a size one you get that little bit more positive ease around the bust again it's all about making it comfortable to wear but it also means that if you're one of those people who's kind of on the cusp of two sizes you may actually be able when you are looking at the love top the love tunic and the love dress you may be able to size down one size so check your uh, sizing check the fit tab on the product page if you're unsure if you're still not sure then drop me an email i'll always help of course and advise and give you suggestions as to what i think is the best size for you and if you order one of our pre-order garments and you're not happy with it, you can always return it. The fact that it's a pre-order does not mean that you can't return it. It just means that we make a big batch and I pass on the savings of making a big batch to you. But it is still a brand new full price garment and it can be returned or exchanged. You can always do that. So back to this glorious lovely thing worn over the top of black and of course you can see that well any of the four colors but black which i don't show you that often as underpinnings is a beautiful backdrop for one of the multicolor garments i tend to grab the gray because i like that very much with my complexion and with my hair and i'm not into wearing black that much actually but you see it looks great and it's a fab backdrop for a multicolor so this is a size one and i will also show you a size two but before moving on to that i wanted to play again with sequencing of garments so like i just did with the love tunic and the play suit i want to do the same thing with love tunic and a dress over the top of my um, cocoon so let me show you that the berry love tunic worn over the top of the love dress in the large bright check worn over the top of a black cocoon set so this is turning into a proper layer cake lots of different layers very comfortable very comfy very cozy and you stay warm without wearing any wool. Now, I'm not advocating we don't wear wool, but some of us are not that comfortable in wool, especially with varying temperatures, <coughs> varying temperatures of ourselves as well as outside. So, like any of the four love tunic colors go really well with the large bright check. This, of course, being the berry. Then there is the damson, the black and the natural. Just showing you this one. But we can go the other way around, of course, as well. So rather than wearing the tunic over the top of the dress, it can go underneath. I'll quickly show you before signing off. So berry tunic underneath the love dress. Like I tend to do, I've rolled up the cuffs of the dress so that you can see the very tunic peeping through. I've done my little trick of 
staggering the uh, necklines of the two garments so you can see both colors but size ones in the berry tunic and the love dress over the top of a size two anytime top and the black baggies now i said just before signing off but that's actually two more things i want to show you i want to show you the difference in fit between a size one love dress and a size two on my body being so close to the size one and two cusp I want to show you the difference in fit between the two this one being the more fitted obviously and then i want to show you the the slightly more oversized one as well in a size two and then i want to show you what happens when you then cover that with a play suit because it's very cold or because you want to show a different type of outfit here we go so here's the size two love dress i don't have it in large bright check yet because of course we haven't done that production run it's just a sample to show you in the size one so this is the size two regular on me and as you can see if i spread my arms then you can see the extra space that i have in this garment i personally love this oversized look and i always encourage everyone to wear these oversized outfits but if that's not for you then you can size down obviously but i just want to show you that in that bigger size it's not exactly as if all of a sudden the garment swamps you as the linen warms up it gets more drapey and it just follows your curves without hugging them too tightly lots of room for movement and really comfortable so how about this play suit combination of course i can put a play suit underneath this dress just like i lived, did with the love tunic but i can do it the other way around as well because of the low legs on a play suit you can wear an entire dress underneath as an extra layer keeping your legs and your knees warmer without obst obstructing your movement in any way i'll show you so here it is size two play suit over the top of my size two love dress and please don't come back and tell me that this only works when you're tall not the case as you may know andrea who makes the layer cakes is five foot two all of the outfits that i show you in the different combinations and the different layers they work on her just as well as they work on me. This is not a height issue. This is proportions and shaping of the garments. And we make sure that those work in the petite lengths and heights as well as they do in the tall ones. Everything is proportionally sized. And whether you are wider and shorter or thinner and taller or any combination, taller and bigger like i am you can wear these combinations and you can wear these layers and they look great they make you feel great and that's what you radiate out in the world when you feel comfortable and you feel good that's what people comment on not the clothes but the clothes are the vehicle that give you that confidence and that make you make you feel comfortable make you feel like you and that's what it's all about so i hope you enjoyed this installment the uh, large bright check love dress uh, is on pre-order the uh, cocoons are ready for all in stock and ready for shipment now the size threes in the anytime tops have been restocked as have the large regular length and the large long length of the baggies and of course there's that new slate top in the anytime and the gray baggies so it's a full complement i didn't show you the white anytime top we still have stock of those as well in all sizes they can go straight away but if you're um, ordering a love dress in the large bride check and you order any of the cocoons with it then everything will ship in one go when the dress is ready which will be somewhere in the next two weeks because the pre-order will run until uh, not this coming Monday, which will be the 30th, but the Monday after that, which is the 6th of 
uh, February, that's when the pre-order for the dresses closes and we'll start producing them. So um, by the third week of uh, February, you will have your love dress and cocoon order. If you want your cocoons before then, then please order them separately from the pre-order so that we can send them out first and your dress can follow later. I hope that all made sense. Thank you very much for watching again and I will see you again soon.